Those of you familiar with my channel know that I cover a lot of Linux distributions. I have covered a laundry list of them. As a matter of fact, most of the time when I cover new or unheard of Linux distributions, I always get somebody in the comments saying, I have never heard of this distribution. But one thing in common, a lot of the popular Linux distributions run KDE. KDE just announced a beta version for its upcoming 5.25 release, which is 5.24.80 and 5.24.90. And what we're going to do today is look at some of the changes they've made to KDE. Have they taken what I believe is one of the best desktop environments out there and made it better? They've hit a home run in my personal opinion. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at today on eBuzz Central. Today's video is brought to you by OnlyOffice. If you want to go to their website, it's OnlyOffice.com. Are you presently running something like a Google Docs or using Microsoft Online? Do you know that all of your emails, photos, and everything they have access to, they can read, they can use for whatever they want? Don't believe me? Go look it up. You don't have that problem with OnlyOffice. It's a secure office and productivity suite. Now, if you scroll down on their website, you've got OnlyOffice Docs, which is collaborative online document editors. You've got spreadsheets, documents, presentations, and forms. It's got the highest compatibility with Microsoft Office, easy integration with ready-to-use connectors, and WOPI support and well-documented API. And then you also have OnlyOffice Workspace. Do you have a business? You can run your entire business through OnlyOffice. It's got document, email, CRM, projects, calendar. It's got enhanced security features, including private rooms, LDAP and Active Directory authentication, compliance, and international security standards. And speaking of security, let's go over here and let's take a look at the security real quick. It lets you know we provide a comprehensive range of security tools and services keeping your data safe on all fronts. Host solutions on premises, encrypt documents and data, customize access settings, and connect authentication services, and manage access rights to protect yourself from unauthorized access, data leaks, and insider actions. Now let's go back real quick. And one of my favorite things I like about it, it's available for Windows, Mac OS, and for Linux. If you use Linux, you can get OnlyOffice. It is a great tool. You can also get it on the Google Play Store for your Android phone or at the Apple iTunes Store for your iPhone. So zip on over and check it out. OnlyOffice.com. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Now, let's get to the video. Now, we are presently over on KDE's announcement page, and it basically states, Today we are bringing you the preview version of KDE Plasma's 5.25 desktop release. Plasma 5.25 Beta is aimed at testers, developers, and bug hunters. To help KDE developers iron out bugs and solve issues, install Plasma 5.25 Beta and test run it, and let us know if there are any problems. They will also be holding a Plasma 5.25 Beta review day on May 26. Details will be published on their social media, so if you're somebody that wants to follow that and actually watch it, get over on KDE social media and you'll be able to see that. And then also you can join us for a day of bug hunting, triaging, and solving alongside the Plasma developers. And the final version of Plasma 5.25 will become available for the general public on the 14th of June. Now they've got a laundry list of things that they've changed. You've got support for accented color title bars in the Breeze Classic theme, rejection animation on the login and lock screens, dialogue to manage containment with edit mode, option to apply accent color from wallpapers, option to use accent color for windows title bars and full header areas option to tint whole color schemes with accent colors global theme page and system settings let you pick and choose which part of the global theme to apply you used to be able to do this but it didn't automatically pop up you could drop down in the lower left and actually click it a lot of people didn't know about that but now it comes right up in your face and you can pick it right off the bat smoothly crossfade between old and new states when changing color schemes Enable keyboard navigation for panels and the system tray. And then on the Plasma desktop, you have an option to control when touch mode is enabled. So if you're using it on a tablet, you've got an optional floating panel for the Plasma themes, which guys looks totally beautiful when you go ahead and click it on. Save positions of folder view icons on per resolution basis. Increase task manager icon spacing in touch mode. And then some KWIN, default touchpad gestures that open overview by default real-time screen edge gestures, shader support, port KWIN scripts, add new blend effect, 
support touchpad real-time activation, improvements for gesture system, and support real-time activation for screen edge gestures. And on Discover, it now displays permission for flat pack applications. Drawer shows all subcategories from the application category, overhauled the app page, plasma add-ons show wallpaper information in the config dialog, info center and like i said guys they have just made a laundry list of updates and changes to kde and i think they're all for the better that's my personal opinion and what i will do is i'll be sure to include at the end of this video where you can go and actually download a distro that's using the beta version of kde so you can test drive it yourself so what i'm going to do right now is go ahead and zip on over to the new kde desktop and we have booted into the desktop now what I'm using is I'm using the KDE Neon Unstable Nightly Build. This one comes with the new KDE 5.25. It's actually 5.24.80, I do believe, but let's double check real quick. I'll go ahead and slip down here to go to About System. And it is the KDE Neon Unstable Edition. It is KDE Plasma version 5.24.80. They also have 5.24.90. You can look that one as well. I believe if I downloaded this tonight, it would bump up to 9.0, but that's where we're at. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And what I want to do real quick is show you one of the things that I really like about it out of the box. Is if you come down here to the panel, and as you can see, the panel's kind of reversed. Now, I don't know if this is the new direction they're going in or if it just looks like this because of the beta. But it's easy to change if you don't like it this way, so it's no big deal. Is We're going to come down here to the panel. We're going to go ahead and right-click and go into edit mode. When you come down here, everybody's familiar with this, especially if you've used KDE. But if you go over to more options, you still have your panel alignment. You still have your visibility settings and your opacity settings. But down here, you have maximized panel, and now you have floating panel. So if you click on floating panel, it'll make it a floating panel on the bottom. We can close out of everything, and as you can see, you've got a floating panel. You've got a little space over here and a little space underneath it, so it's floating. It's not completely taking up the whole bottom part now what I am going to do is I'm going to come down here and let's open up file manager and as you can see when you go full screen on file manager or any window for that matter it makes it a full panel again so you're not sitting here with floating dock with a little bit of space here and there on the bottom it's not wasting any screen space which I think is great now if we minimize this or if we make it smaller as you can see the floating panel comes back so maximize it goes away minimize it comes back so i really like that feature kde is really making leaps and bounds in my personal opinion of becoming an even better desktop environment than it already is now a couple more things i want to show you real quick let's go ahead and close out of this let's go back to settings and we're going to come up here to appearance and click on appearance now first thing we're in the breeze theme right here You've got application style, you've got plasma style, then you've got colors. So I'm going to go ahead and pick colors because I want to show you some neat things here. Right now, it's set from the current color scheme, which means your window borders are that way. Everything else is that way, even your accent colors up here. Now, you've got choices here. You can come down here and set yourself a custom color. Or you can come over here to where you've got the little ink dropper and actually set a color that you want. Let's say you wanted something like that. You can click OK. Then your highlights would be that custom color right there, and you can see it right there. And then if you wanted to apply it across the desktop environment, just click Apply, and it has been applied. But another thing you can do is adjust it from your current wallpaper. So let's go ahead and click on Current Wallpaper, and it shows you the colors that it's going to use, and you click Apply. Now you have it adjusted for the current wallpaper. Now, what I really like about this is if you come over here, let's go ahead and configure desktop and wallpaper, and let's go ahead and pick a different wallpaper, shall we? So let's scroll down, and let's pick trees. Let's go with the trees right there and click Apply. As you can see, your accent color over here changed. Everything changed with the click of a button. Now, if you went down further, let's go with something a little bit more subdued let's go with that click apply and as you can see everything changed to go along with the wallpaper that you're using i really really like that so let's go with evening glow click apply and as you can see the colors change rather quickly and they change rather smoothly 
So that's another thing I love about what they're doing with KDE. Now, another thing I want to point out real quick, as you notice, if you come down here, you've got different looks you can have for your window. Now, if you see right here on Breeze Classic, you notice that the window border up top is actually the same color as your global theme that has changed with your wallpaper. If you want that to happen, just click right there, click apply, and now the top of your window, which would be your active window, shows you the same highlight colors that you would have that go along with the wallpaper. So if you come back down over here, and let's say we wanted to go to this wallpaper, click apply, everything changes. The active window will be highlighted right there as well. I really, really like that. I think that is an overall update for the look and feel of KDE Neon. I think people are really going to enjoy it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Now, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, and we're going to come down here, and I want to go to System Monitor. And as you can see, those highlights work right here on your menu as well. And I want to look up System. There's the System Monitor. Let's go ahead and click on that. You get your nice overview here. You got your applications, your history. And I like the way if you look right here, it shows your CPU. It's got two different colors for two different cores. Before, you had a little different play on this, but I like the way it looks now. They've definitely updated some things on the system monitor. And if you go to tools, you can launch console, launch info center, kill a window. You've also got processes that you can take out over here. And then you can show own processes, user process, system processes, all processes. And then you get your nice little accent color that comes down here feeding you all your information on your system so what we're going to do next is we're going to zip on over and take a look at the discover application center because i really think that the changes they made in here really put a polish on the kde desktop environment now once this has loaded up i'm going to go ahead and we're going to go maximize screen right now it shows that i have updates due but we're working on a nightly beta build so i'm not going to worry about that i just want to show you some different things that you can see here what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Caden Live. And now what you get right here is you get a nice little informative panel on the right hand side that shows you about Caden Live. It shows you that it's a nonlinear video editor, shows you the version here, the size, where it's coming from, and then license unknown. You've got reviews here. And then if you scroll down, it lets you know that permissions for Caden Live, it has full access and can access everything on your system. Now, if you go back up and if you pop up here to where it says sources, let's click on that. Let's say you wanted to get it from the Flat Hub. Let's click on Flat Hub. It's going to pop up, give you some nice screenshots of it right here. Then it's going to let you know right here, this is version 22.04.1. It was released on May 12th, 2022. It lets you know the size of it, 66.9 megabytes to download. And then once installed, it's going to be 218 megabytes. Of course, because it is a flat pack, it's going to have everything that it needs inside that pack to run the application. So, of course, it's going to be bigger. And then, of course, you get the Caden Live video editor info right here. You get reviews right there. And then when you come down here, it'll let you know permissions for Caden Live. On the flat pack version, it has permission to access your network. Device access can communicate with and control built-in or connected hardware devices. System folder access. It lets you know that it can read and write system files in the following locations. All files. Session bus access. And then system bus access. So down here, you get all the information you need to understand that Caden Live has permissions for all of this right here. Now, if you go over to Krita, it'll bring Krita up. You can go over here to Sources, go to Flat Hub, and then when you scroll down here, it'll have documentation for Krita. It'll have your website. It'll give you the same version info, the same size info, and then when you come down here, it'll also give you permission info, network access, system folder access, and system box access. So if you have an application that is available on Flat Hub 
and it is a flat pack, it'll now give you the permissions that you have for that application. I think it's just one step further in proving that KDE is bettering itself with every release and it just keeps getting better. Especially after the mistakes of eight to 10 years ago when everybody loved KDE and then they changed it up and everybody was upset because they changed it, but they're getting to a point now that this is a very polished desktop environment. And what is great about it is if you come down here and let's go ahead and open up a terminal. And we will go ahead. Do they have H top? They don't. Top. So you're getting all this beauty. And you take a look at the RAM we have issued to the machine. I got four gigabytes of RAM. And right now, with just the console open, you're using 680 megabytes of RAM. So you're getting a better looking desktop environment. They've made changes to the Discover Software Center. And this is just the tip of the sword. If you guys want to, you can download this and test drive it yourself. Like I said, I'm using the KDE Neon Unstable Edition. They also have a version for Garuda Linux KDE, which is the Git Edition, and they have OpenSUSE Krypton. I will link those in the description below. So if you want to download them and take the new KDE desktop for a test drive, you can. But I truly believe everything they're doing is definitely a great leap forward for the desktop environment. What do you think about the KDE beta release 5.25? Let me know in the comments below. If you get a chance, zip on by the Ebo Central store, take a look around. If you see something you like, go ahead and pick it up. If there's something you would like to see on the store that's not there, please drop that in the comments below and we'll do our best to get it up there for you. Do me a big favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. Doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, throwing us a donation on PayPal, or zipping on over to Patreon and becoming a patron to the channel. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.